Today we're going to look at the best operating systems to use for data science in 2020. This includes some major potentially game-changing announcements, which have just been announced within the last month. We're also going to go over a few important things typically not talked about in data science. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. The first thing to consider is if your work is going to be running off a laptop or a set of servers. Typically, analysis, experimentation, and development work are done off laptops or desktops, which run either Windows, OS X, or a Linux distribution like Ubuntu, which is a popular, more friendly distribution with a lot of development put into the graphical user interface. All of these operating systems are well supported for the most typical data science tools like R and Python. So at first glance, all of these operating systems are suited perfectly well for carrying out data science work. However, there's something else you should also consider. Work needs to be shifted to a server when either your code needs to run for more than one person or your data becomes too large to process on a single computer. The vast majority of servers these days, including servers from Microsoft, all run on Linux. Typically using something like Red Hat, which is a commercial version of Linux traditionally used by enterprises, or something like Debian or some other free Linux distribution, which are now growing in popularity due to commercial support from cloud service providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. Linux is typically faster, more reliable, and easier to administer on servers. Many apps these days are web-based, which means they pretty much run entirely in the cloud. Or even if you have a mobile app that's installed on your phone or computer, it quite often uses the cloud to do a lot of the heavy processing anyway. The thing is, in order to develop software that runs on Linux, ideally you want to be developing in Linux in the first place to eliminate any compatibility issues between different operating systems. So the question is, if all servers run Linux, why not run Linux on laptops? As mentioned, one of the most popular distributions for Linux is Ubuntu because it contains a nice user interface similar to what you would have in Windows or OS X. Some of the benefits of using Ubuntu is that you're basically using the same OS as the production OS or the OS that you're using on a server. Linux typically uses less memory, and so you're able to install it on older hardware. Or even if you are running on newer, faster hardware, you have more memory available to run your different machine learning models and your analysis. It's free, and there are many, many different options for customizing your operating system, even with just Ubuntu alone, or there's many other different Linux distributions that you can also install as well if you wanted a different look and feel or a different user experience. So some of the cons include a lack of hardware support. So if you're installing Linux on a laptop, it sometimes just doesn't work as well as you would always like it to. And it's a bit of uh, it's a bit of hit and miss sometimes. Also, there's a lack of productivity software. So these could include typical things like Microsoft Office or something like, say, Final Cut Pro if you want to do some video editing or any other kind of software that you might like to get for Windows or Mac. You could argue that there's a lot of free and open source alternatives these days to all these different types of software. But the issue is that they're just really not as well refined or well supported as a standard that everybody else is using. So that can be a real difficulty there. The other things are the learning curve. Although, as mentioned, Ubuntu is going to be quite similar in a way to something like Windows or OS X, if you've ever tried to switch between operating systems, there are going to be little bits and pieces which are different and are going to take some getting used to. And finally, it can be a bit confusing. As mentioned, one of the pros is that there's lots of options. This is really a double-edged sword. Sometimes it can be far easier if there are less options. So if you're asking something online, you know that everybody's effectively talking about the same thing. 
Now, some pretty recent news from Lenovo, which just released this announcement this month about how they are bringing Linux certifications to some of their computers. I think this is a really great step because it will mean that there will be far better hardware support. So anytime you want to actually install Linux on a computer, you can actually um, choose to get uh, Linux preset up installed, or there will be guides um, officially supported by a hardware manufacturer um, and good driver support and all of that sort of thing. So this is actually a really nice step on better supporting Linux for laptops. So now let's take a look at Apple. Apple for the past few years has been one of the most popular machines amongst developers. So aside from having a polished user experience and exclusive productivity software, one of the key things about OS X for Apple is that it's natively Unix. Now, Unix and Linux basically come from the same origins. It more or less works the same way. And most of the things that you do on Unix are pretty much going to be compatible with Linux. And so I would say that this would be one of the real key reasons why it is popular amongst developers. Now, another reason is that it also supports native iOS development. So if you want to develop for iPhone or iPad for a long time, Apple was really your only choice. Now, this is actually changing now with frameworks like Flutter, which enable cross platform development for iOS and Android at the same time without having to work on an Apple computer. Other benefits of Apple are the Apple ecosystem that everybody always talks about. And they seem to last a long time without really needing too much maintenance. A few years back, I was recommending all my friends and family to buy Macs, basically because they're less maintenance and I didn't want to be caught up doing reimaging Windows all the time or being tech support. Now, some of the cons for Apple computers is, well, first of all, they can be sort of expensive. Uh, secondly, one of the things that's a little bit annoying is the fact that they have no ports on them. So just every time you want to plug in a monitor or a projector to your computer, having to find a dongle around is a little bit annoying. Another thing worth noting is that it's technically not true Linux. Now, as mentioned, it is based on Unix, so it is actually pretty compatible. However, there are a few OSX specific things that have been implemented which are not fully Linux compatible. So if you are using some of those, then you are still gonna have a few compatibility issues. Another con is if you are, say, a data analyst or a consultant and you need to use Microsoft Excel for the work that you do with your clients, the version of Excel for Mac is a really dumbed down version of it. So it really doesn't include a lot of things. There's a lot of compatibility issues. Uh, there's no VBA macros and there is no Power Query as well as a whole bunch of other bits and pieces. And the other thing I have on this list here is that it uses AMD instead of NVIDIA GPUs. Now, I'm sure these are both really great products if, say, you're a gamer or a graphics designer, but if you're into machine learning, then pretty much all the algorithms at the moment are developed for NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, there are a handful of new algorithms which are developed to work with both, but for the most part of it, a lot of the algorithms right now really only work with NVIDIA graphics cards. So you're really not getting uh, the benefit if you are using an AMD GPU. So if you take a look at the top of the range, 16 inch MacBook Pro. You can see here that they've decided to go with an AMD GPU, which is a wee bit of a shame because you are paying quite a bit of money for this machine 
for a graphics processor that you can't really use for the purposes of data science. Now, I don't currently have a GPU in my current laptop. And you may have seen one of my other videos on the best laptop to get for data science. And if you want to check that out, you can check out one of the links in the description below. But basically, the gist of it is, is that GPUs only speed up certain things. And a lot of times you might not actually be using them at all, even if you have them there. Yet they can add a bit of price and weight and heft to your laptop, which means it's a lot less nice to carry it around. I actually also used this 16 inch MacBook Pro for work for a while, but I personally just found it a bit too heavy for me to want to carry it anywhere. So now moving on to Windows, a lot of people feel that there is a nicer window management system. A lot of enterprise software, particularly a legacy software has been developed for Windows. These days, as mentioned, a lot of the software is all web based. So it tends to be more cross platform doesn't quite matter as much. However, there is still a lot of enterprise software, which is only going to work on Windows. The other reason for using Windows is that it's got full Microsoft Office as mentioned earlier. If you need access to full Excel with use of macros and Power Query, then that really only works for the Windows version of Microsoft Office. You have faster and cheaper hardware, which I suppose is also true of Linux as well, because it all runs off basically PC hardware. And probably one of the newer, more exciting things is the support for uh, WSL2, which is Windows subsystem for Linux 2 and the Windows terminal. So as we mentioned throughout this video, you really want to be developing in a Linux environment if you want to be able to get your work onto a Linux server later. Now, this has been one of the major cons historically of working in a Windows environment is that it basically hasn't been very easy to do this. So this is also a fairly recent announcement. So I'm just going to read this quickly here. So today, Microsoft announced the general availability of Windows SIP system for Linux 2 in the Windows 10 May 2020 update. So WSL2 is based on a new architecture that provides full Linux binary application compatibility and improved performance. WSL2 is powered by a real Linux kernel in a lightweight virtual machine that boots in under two seconds. WSL2 is the best way to experience Ubuntu on WSL. So basically what this means is that you can use uh, Windows and all the sort of productivity software and have all the benefits of Windows, but still be developing in a Linux environment. In fact, this is just a Ubuntu and actually you can run very easily run and install going to the Microsoft store and quite easily installing multiple distributions of Linux within just a few minutes and being able to run them virtually on your computer. Now, the way to access that is a Windows terminal. So as mentioned, one of the key benefits that Mac has had for a really long time is that it's natively Unix. And so the terminal in OS X allowed you to basically type in shell scripts or Linux commands that would work whether you're on OS X or a Linux server. So you can see here that this Windows terminal is running on Ubuntu and basically any other Linux distribution that you'd want to stick on your system as well, you can just as easily run it. So this is a whole lot more convenient than running a dual boot system because you can basically switch back and forth and still have access to all of your applications. 
Now, some of the cons of Windows is, well, first of all, it's already fairly memory hungry on its own compared to just installing Linux natively on your system. Because Linux runs in a virtual machine, you might be concerned that, well, you're running Windows plus Linux on top in a virtual machine, there might not be as much system resource left to, to really run things and things might run a little bit slow. So Microsoft actually has done quite a bit of work to optimize the performance of Linux running in a virtual machine on Windows. So I actually think that this could be a pretty good option for a lot of people, but just something that at the end of the day, you need to decide for yourself. As mentioned previously, many people seem to observe that Macs run for years without needing any maintenance or operating system rebuilds. While Windows has gotten substantially better in this regard, I'm just not sure that you would use a Windows machine for the same length of time without it starting to feel old and slow. If you want to learn more up-to-date practical skills for working in data analytics and data science from industry professionals, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.